I saw the film, it was a New York screening, and I was just beaming with pride. I just was like, he did it. He did a movie that was incredibly stylish, but also smart and thought-provoking. And um, congratulations, it was just, just Thank a you. beautiful, beautiful film. Thank you. I'm glad it stayed with you. I think that's always important. It's for me how I judge a movie, so thank you very much. In the fashion business for over 20 years, mm -hmm. that had to have a huge influence on being a director. Is it Tom Ford grows up and wants to be a fashion no. creative director, fashion designer, or does he want to be a director, or is it kind of a culmination of all these visual things put together? It was a culmination of all those visual things. Although I would have loved it. to have been a cosmetic surgeon as well. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, because it's the same. It's architecture. You know, I look at the bones of someone's face. It's about seams. Where do you hide the seam? How do you reshape that? How do you rebuild it? It's a type of aesthetics, and I'm quite fascinated with it. it and all breasts, I could really improve breast implants. You know, from an early childhood, I loved design. I loved moving things around, m telling stories. I was always very good at that, mm -hmm. and telling stories visually, which I think fashion. You know, fashion sometimes gets a short. Uh, what's the word, uh, shortchanged in some yeah. way, because what we do, we really work hard at. In fashion, it's a much more collaborative field than people realize. You have to have a vision, but then you have to communicate it to the pattern makers, the shoemaker, you know, uh, your team, uh, the guy who's building your sets, the person who's working on your music for the show, and then you have to support these people, and then you have to steer and guide all of that to help realize your vision exactly the same skill set you need as a director guiding a team of people. So your uh, intuition plays into it a lot, I would assume. In our business, that's all you have. You know, marketing reports and selling reports and all the stuff can tell you what's in the store now and what's selling. It doesn't tell you what's there tomorrow. Your intuition tells you that. So anyone who's successful in the fashion industry uses their intuitions. The more you do go with your gut, with your intuition, the more you're really giving a gift to people out there, something original and something They're both really industries passionate. too, where things look glossy and fabulous on the exterior. Yes. The amount of work and energy that goes into both industries on the back, the public doesn't see. That's a, interesting that you said that, because that's what we love, and I'm just gonna keep saying this over and over again, but this is a, a very visually rich movie, but it's, it's the, the clothes and the style did not overpower the nuances of the performances. Starting with Colin Firth, who I think did a phenomenal job, and I've never seen him look so good. What did you do to Colin Firth to make him look so good? I looked at the shape of Colin's head. Uh, Colin's hair in natural life, I think, is detracts from the shape of his head. So I knew instantly, Colin, we need to brush your hair. He, he was really nervous about cutting his hair on the sides. He wouldn't let the hairdresser do it. I actually had to do it. I got down on my knees and I said, Colin, I promise I'm going to do one snip at a time. And then, you know, the glasses and the clothes and we, we aged him a bit so the hair is, you know, gray. And I'm glad you thought he looked good. I thought he looked gorgeous. I thought well, he was so handsome. And because it was a character, he was comfortable with it because he needed to become George. Uh, Did the movie influence at all where you're taking Tom Ford or at least a, a part of it? I've always loved big lapels, like from the 1930s or the 1970s. So my lapels will probably always be a little bigger than everyone else's. However, when I did this film, uh, you know, I fell in love with George. I helped create George, I created George. And we have a lot of customers who come to the store who like smaller lapels, who sometimes find our lapels to be too big. I thought, okay, we should offer to our customers a smaller lapel. So in the book, George doesn't have a last name, so I had to give him a last name. We gave him the name Falconer, uh, and we called the suit Falconer. And now you can get two different cuts. You can get a, a peak lapel, uh, like George's blazer, or you can get a suit uh, in the same cut, different fabrics, a range of fabrics. Are there certain elements uh, in a guy's wardrobe that, you, that are eternal? A man needs a blazer, a pair of jeans, beautiful pair of shoes, beautiful watch, we've all heard this before, a perfect tuxedo, a good dark suit, a tie. That's it. You can go to anything. You can go to a wedding, you can go to a funeral, you can go to a dinner party, you can go to the, you know, the, you can go anywhere with that. That's it. In your mind, who is the most stylish man on earth and why? Lapo Elkan. Wacky as hell style, but never looks foolish. If you use him as inspiration, and I have, and I do all the time, by the way, things that work on Lapo, a lot of people look like clowns in. No. It drives me crazy when people say, oh, I should have lived in the 30s. It was so glamorous. And they're looking like an absolute slob. It's like, 
go buy a beautiful suit. Go right. to a vintage store if you can't right. afford it. Thank you, Tom Ford. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you.